back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and basically just anything else that catches our interest. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching us live on Twitch. How's mm-hmm. it going? It's another fantastic week for Linux, guaranteed. At least we hope yes. it is. So, a couple of things have happened since last week, but before we get into all that nonsense, I'm going to... Tell everyone I was violently remembered just how much I loathe working with analog audio hardware. Just <laughs> with a passion, playing around with, oh, right, is this plus four, minus ten? Okay, what, there's a grounding issue? Oh, where's my isolation transformer? Oh, right, how hot can I get into the dock? Giggity. Uh, it's all for video. It's all for the good of broadcasting and doing stuff from Linux, trying to find it. Again, I'm always on the lookout for things like good values that like, Hey, go get this and you can do this on the cheap. And, uh, one piece of hardware that I wanted kind of led into another piece of hardware. And I was like, wait, those things are affordable now. Huh? Okay. Maybe we can do a little video on that, but yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to that and laughing at black magic, uh, keyboards for DaVinci resolve. That's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, they're no longer a thousand dollars though. So if you want a $600 keyboard and you can only, uh, rocking the corner <laughs> a little bit less for uh buying one what about you jill you went back to disneyland again and again yeah. and again i mean yes. at, at some point <laughs> what, what do you do when, after you've seen all of the disneyland you just start over you're just like all right well you just yeah you, know, you you take in the the beautiful you know environment the theming one of the uh, favorite things me and my and steve husband did is when we went we went to um a restaurant and just sat and watched watched the uh, Mark Twain go by and the Disneyland train and then we were sitting in the perfect spot for fireworks. So that, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the cool thing about having a pass is you can just go and enjoy Disneyland. You don't have to go, you know, and, and hurry up and get on all the rides and do all the things. You can just take your time you get and to enjoy lounge. what Walt <laughs> compute yeah, what Walt created. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Pedro. Admittedly, not much has been going on here, though um, I will not be going to Portugal the next couple of weeks because uh, of a number of things. And so, yeah, no, I guess you're stuck with me. But uh, yeah, no, outside of that, it is uh, work. There's been a lot of that going on. Mm. A lot of yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> between turning down free teslas <laughs> i have not had the pleasure of that yet <laughs> though hypothetically speaking i did do that earlier but uh yes that that was only a hypothetical scenario unfortunately <laughs> all right uh something that dropped uh after the show last week and all in good fun and all humor turned out to be more well received than i ever expected Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is something actually really fun. This is the GNOME shell extension iNotch. So you can add a useless notch to your screen like Apple, like on <laughs> Apple laptops. <laughs> and uh, what's really cool is the developer, um, Alinx Zoo, um, the facts on, on the README on, uh, on uh, GitHub are really fun. Uh, one of the questions is, why do you create such an ugly extension? And his answer is, please ask Apple why they create such an ugly notch on their laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and another question was, my cursor disappears when it enters the notch. And the answer is, this is the same behavior as the hardware notch on the Mac laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes <laughs> and what was cool is the developer said that this was his uh most popular project of all the serious projects he's done this was one of the most popular and he also does other um gnomic extensions as well and i think it's a fun way to stick it to apple really i mean <laughs> if you have a linux friend that also have a, has an apple laptop or even an iphone with that stupid notch at the top <laughs> Well, you can install this no, Gnome. <laughs> Jill's segment is brought to you by Notch Vision because above Jill is a notch. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> there's a notch. <laughs> yes, there it is. <laughs> 
you know what, man? Um, as much as much as Pedro loves to take a shot at gnome and gnome extensions, you got to admit this is a very functional and useful one, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> yes, as far as gnome extensions go, this one is perfect. <laughs> It's social commentary, it's uh, parody, it's satire. Well done. That's fun. (laughs) Big big round of applause uh, to the developer because, hey, if Apple can adopt, quote unquote, uh, Gnome 3's poor UI design, I suppose a little quid pro quo was in order. Yeah. Well, good job. Look at it this way. This way, I, I I know what a notch is, but I've oh, I've also seen the uh, video of I think somebody was opening up some application. That notch is just there. When your menu bar expands, things just go behind the notch. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hide everything. And yeah, you can't click on just things. Just like it does on a Mac. <laughs> you know yeah. what? You know what? There's room for improvement with this extension though, because we can get like some side notches, maybe like two or three at the bottom. I mean. <laughs> Uh, someone made a joke about that with the first iPhone that had a notch. They released one that had like a notch uh, at the top, a notch at the bottom, and then two notches down the side. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're not far off from that. <laughs> Here's what we need to make for Android. We need to make some little stickers that we can like, put over the top. Or oh, you just you get go. yourself a Nokia phone. <laughs> yeah. You get yourself a Nokia yeah. phone that has a stupid notch. <laughs> nah, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Here's a little bit of a PSA from your friendly neighborhood, Mateus. Yes, uh, <laughs> very quick PSA. If you're running your own instance of GitLab, patch yesterday. Because there was a really, really bad vulnerability. It was both remote code execution and privilege escalation. And all you needed to do was create an account, all default settings, n- no special settings, nothing, and upload a an attachment a payload, but it was just an attachment and you get yourself full admin access. That That's bad. That That's bad. And they caught this because uh, someone was running their own instance of GitLab and they reported it because they had two people, like two new accounts show up. And after a day of not doing anything, uh, immediately after they created, they had uploaded some stuff. Uh, it failed, at least as far as the logs would say, but the very next day, they had full admin access to that instance. That's bad. And they were they managed to replicate it. So the fix for CVE 2021-22205 is out patch yesterday. Seriously. What if I just want to air gap it, though? And I, I don't... if you want to see what uh two rogue accounts do by themselves sure (laughs) i mean that's a test case yeah why not (laughs) uh yes take care of that that was just a quick mention we wanted to get out there Mm -hmm. into these there just in case you missed the news um starlight starbright it's kind of wide and for star i see tonight it's 400 (laughs) pounds but this is a small one Okay, this is the Starlight, a small laptop from Star Labs with an 11-inch 1080p matte IPS display. And it has just been released. And it has an Intel Pentium Silver processor with up to 3.1 gigahertz quad-core processing, 8 gigs of RAM, an aluminum chassis, a 2-megapixel webcam. It's fanless, has a back backlit keyboard and a glass, nice big glass touchpad and an estimated eight hours of battery life. Pretty good. And it has a sweet price of 400 British pounds. And I think it's actually a great price point for an ultra portable. (laughs) But Pedro thinks otherwise. And I think it's honestly a great alternative for a Chromebook, at least a fanless one. And yeah, so uh, the Star Labs laptops, we love them. Um, They have um, the... uh, open warranty that lets you disassemble the device without voiding the warranty. And it's got so many cool things like uh, open source firmware, like core boot. And um, you have your several choices of different uh, open firmware. Uh, the American Megatrends yes, AMI one. Is nice. Yeah. Uh, and Starlight yeah. have been pretty good about actually doing that. But that $400 yeah. uh, or pound in this case, 400 pounds, <laughs> that's like... 450 bucks uh, for a Pentium and uh, what is it? The 5030, eight gigs of RAM, 
at least it has an M.2 uh, SATA SSD and a 1080p mm-hmm. IPS screen. That's very nice. But it's still a little too much. The, that's, especially for being fanless, you, the moment you do anything, and they, I like how they have uh, screenshots of uh, Ubuntu and other distros running GNOME, that's going, <laughs> that's going to throttle worse <laughs> than my Chromebook does. That. No, it, it it's it, it's not going to be a good experience. I mean, it's a Mm-mm. boutique Linux thing, though, man. I mean, it is, and it is uh, the yeah. I guess the price comes from the case being all um, aluminum or aluminium, however you want to say it. That's my but, boy. But again, uh, I, I point to the um, the Pinebook, the Pinebook Pro, all aluminum, aluminium, whatever you want to say, uh, 1080p screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's ARM. Admittedly, so it is not going to perform quite so well that, as uh, that, 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 this one does. That's something yeah, I was scared you were going to think about, like, I'm going to gloss over a little bit. Is there any benchmark that this thing just doesn't annihilate? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. the, that is a quad-core x86 Intel processor. And I, so, I want yes. everyone to pay attention to the um, language I was using. I wasn't saying outperforms. The word I used was annihilate. <laughs> the, yeah. completely yes <laughs> but then again this is 400 pounds that one was 250 so, so, so you're saying yeah. you get a lot of annihilation for your buck <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes for th- that extra 150 pounds you get a lot of annihilation significantly <laughs> but for x80 for an x86 machine that's pricey Starlight, uh, really hire pricey. me for marketing <laughs> annihilation incoming so <laughs> couple of things first thing i noticed about this was um i am for audio listeners we're looking at the keyboard and the positioning of that power button which is in the upper corner right next to two keys that you would never tap uh delete and backspace (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i complained about that in the um slim book (laughs) review and here we are again more questionable design choices ripped directly from apple don't Put the power button where the delete key should be. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm going to call you guys out a little bit because you changed it, which is good. But this originally <laughs> said, go to the Wayback Machine. Uh, it was gallium nitrate originally. I was like, what is gallium nitrate? And I looked it up. And I'm like, I nitrate? don't. No, man. Nitride <laughs> is what they've changed it to, which is, you know, utilization. That's the correct uh, one. Yes, <laughs> this is the correct one now. So. At least it's okay, been fixed. Yeah. Um, yeah, 400 pounds. I mean, it's a netbook. Like, I get it. I don't think that's completely out out of the question for something that's fanless, ultra portable, and it has got a big chunky yeah. glass trackpad, and it's got a tinny. It's under 500. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's, it's got a very it, nice it screen. It meets too. your requirement. And they said, How, okay, what's the maximum we can charge for this? <laughs> Someone. Yeah, no, that is right at the no line. But uh, yeah, no, looking at the specs of that and going, Oh, I have an 11 inch uh, eleven inch Chromebook that has the N3050. That's not what they were looking at. The Celeron Pedro processor. They, they pulled up the pedometer and it was set at $400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 400 currency units. Mm-hmm. That's. It usually happens to be whatever currency because it, it is a one to one translation, even if the pound is worth slightly. Now, more I want everyone than to check this out. You can choose your pre installed <laughs> distribution, and listen, you get more than so Coke nice. and Pepsi here, man. We have Ubuntu, <laughs> Elementary yeah. Linux, Mint, Zora, and MX Linux. Basically, you got a bunch of copies of Ubuntu that you can install, except for Elementary. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're supporting a company that installs Linux Ubuntu. by default. <laughs> You know, other than the Pinebook Pro, you this is the cheapest <laughs> you can you can buy Open from a Linux vendor. source firmware, which is also nice yeah. to see. Yes, and That's you got to think one. about like this. Uh, maybe Absolutely, you, you want to give them a look. I mean, Star Labs, especially if you're on the island in the EU, because you start factoring mm-hmm. in things like getting se- System yeah. seventy six import uh, VAT and all the other fun stuff that you're going to get stacked on. All of a sudden. 400 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this uh, Starlight, Entraware, Tuxedo, those are the ones for people on this side of the Atlantic. Yeah. Those are the ones that uh, you need to be looking at. And I guess if you must get an ultra portable that has to be fanless and you want a 1080p screen, you can't, everyone kind of does nowadays. That's like the minimum. So, yeah. I, it's still a little too much for me. Well, but, I, eh. you got to look at the <laughs> entire um, 
like category as a whole, like the ultra, the, the netbook and that, that that's been, that lunch has yeah. kind of been eaten by tablets, mm-hmm. you know, but Hey, may, maybe you like retro computing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and their there pr- are prices are actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, their prices are actually, you know, starlight is actually, they're kind of middle on the road for, compared to the other Linux vendors. Yes. So they actually have very good prices. Very, Overall, very even decent on their high end systems, boutique vendor. So, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. All right. So, this is kind of interesting. Uh, I ran across this earlier this week. Uh, writing a Linux compatible kernel in Rust. Too long, didn't read. It's happening. I'm writing Linux clone in Rust just for fun. <laughs> it does not aim to replace the Linux kernel, to which I will say laughs and torvals. Um, because <laughs> something like this has happened before and it will all happen again kids it absolutely will uh because you know he even comes in he points out he's like hey man this is just a hobby project i'm just playing around you know what other operating systems started out as just a hobby project and they're just playing around it's not big and gnu it was temple <laughs> yeah, OS. it's not gonna be big and professional like new yeah uh-huh. <laughs> that's right kids temple os, temple OS. <laughs> sorry i had to repeat it because these two yahoos were stepping on my joke um sorry so, <laughs> is rust good for the kernel end i mean we, we've had some discussions mm-hmm. about this and we've seen this go back and forth is rust as efficient you know hey but it's memory face out of the box not performant mm, it's getting there um i i don't know this this just seems like something that i wanted to keep an eye on, you know, oh, bigger yeah. binary sizes and all that. All this is true. But again, hobby project, just playing around, but he's gotten a lot of interest. Because yeah. I always like to be, yeah, sure. you know, when you think back, you're like, oh, I was there when it all started. <laughs> and um, I was talking about it in the pre show. Patrons, go listen to that if you want the full story. But uh, years and years and years ago on Reddit in a very active thread, I mean, it had like 70 comments in it. It was amazing. Um, it was large at the time. We had an onion in our belt. And uh, there was this guy, but we were playing around with his new website and he was like, it kind of works here. Check it out. That website that we were commenting and doing feedback on was called Imager. So I always like mm-hmm. to be around like when something starts and, you know, maybe 20 years from now, like I remember talking about that when the guy was just a hobby project and lo and behold, we have Temple OS too. Now I'm Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, then this maintained. is actually, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is especially important now because they are the the Linux kernel developers are working on some Rust Im- implementation in the Linux kernel. They're allowing it and, in is where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, it's it's I, I'm sure Linus is going to be looking at this, and um, the developer Saya Nuda actually needs developers to help him write this Rusty kernel. And I think this would look great on anyone's resume and Linus would be very impressed. So if you're interested in Linux kernel development, this, this is a a big, good project to work on. (laughs) It's there. It's up on GitHub. You can go play with it. All this is going to be in the show notes after the fact, but I mean, a couple of things are currently running. I mean, for its compatibility with, um, you know, I mean, it will run some unmodified Linux binaries, Pedro. Now, how much would you pay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh right now nothing at all uh this is very much a sit back and watch see how it unfolds but yeah no that's that's very nice that mm-hmm. kudos probably uh you mentioned uh performance earlier event yes it's rust it's uh the memory segregation or separation of processes even in individual kernel threads could be very good for security could be very, very good for security, but the performance will inevitably uh, be impacted by that kind of stuff. Less as time goes on, but it, that's inevitable. Well, I mean, we're you, you're seeing people have to revisit performance a little bit because you got to say probably the last decade, we're, like, we're just going to throw more cores and more megahertz at it. More mm-hmm. rap. And uh, speculative execution. Oh, that was a bad idea, wasn't well, it? There's that, but we also kind of <laughs> run up against like the um, like wall performance wall for like non exotic mm-hmm. cooling solutions. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. So this next story is something that I, I was very interested to see because I, one thing deleting a directory from the terminal. Uh, it's something I do. 
about every other week with OBS, but I still mm. feel like I'm entering launch codes anytime dash RF <laughs> comes up. Like, mm-hmm. mm, yeah, and, and not pseudo, <laughs> just like doing it in my home directory. I'm like, wipe everything out. <laughs> but even if you do that, it may no longer be a problem. Yes. Uh, you're not the only one in being worried about that. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Brew was very much uh, speaking from, at least from the little blurb that he wrote on GitLab. Uh, yeah, save my bacon. It is a teeny tiny little shell script that, as he puts it, uh, could save your career. And yeah, it is if you accidentally RM, RF, uh, forward slash star, Steam, uh, you may, may, have a, a bit of a chance. Uh, it everything that gets deleted in any bash instance that it, this just loads from your bash RC. So uh, everything that loads from your bash RC, which is most of everything that you run as a user, um, will be saved in the new recycled conf, and that will hopefully give you a way back after you uh, done goof your system so bad <laughs> that your entire um, home partition is just gone. You may, may very well have a chance at recovering. So if you do a lot of terminal work and that is something that has happened to you or you've been very afraid of because you've heard the horror stories, save my bacon on mm-hmm. GitLab. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, when I when I first read this, I'm like, this is incredible. This is something a, a lot of people have needed because then you don't have to ever worry about typing RM, R, D, TAC, RF ever again in the terminal and, and deleting your system. So <laughs> this is a nice backup. It, it's nice to have that security in the terminal <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I just really call it like a reliable backup so much as like this, this, this is better than nothing. It's, mm-hmm. it, it is a Hail Mary. Yeah. Yes. And you yeah. probably won't trust that user profile after you've recovered it after accidentally it's deleting a, it. It's, uh. it's a better experience <laughs> than having to Google search data recovery on ext4. Yes. Mm. Uh, true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is true. All right. Uh, I made a thing and I put it up. Patrons have had it for about a week, but I've released it to the public. Pedro, tell me about it. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a curveball, but yeah, no, uh, yeah. Ven does a bit of a series called Interfacing Linux where he plugs stuff in, goes, oh, that works out of the box. Well, that's no fun. Uh, <laughs> and he pokes at uh, all manner of audio interfaces. This one uh, is the YouTuber special, the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, the third gen one. And... Well, Ven had a bit of a poke at it. You can see those magnificent mm-hmm. lanky hands right there, uh, pointing at all the knobs. Th- there was a definite lack of um, a twirling the knobs. I was disappointed. But <laughs> <laughs> if that is something that you're um, that you've been looking at and you want to use it with Linux, as a very good article that goes along with the video with all the technical bits. So yeah, have a look, and uh, it's it's been a fairly popular series. So. Um, you yeah. can see me rock Very. out. I, I play sweet <laughs> tunes. Yo. Mm. Yes. <laughs> sure A lot did. of people were saying, confirm, Ven can in fact play the guitar. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, he's played it on several occasions. <laughs> Either several that videos. or like, yeah, for somebody who owns as many guitars as I do, one would hope. Um, <laughs> I even do a teardown. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if you want to see them guts. Now, I started this... Uh, just out of curiosity, because I realized about two years ago that FireWire interfaces were just getting dumped on the market because uh, Windows support, you know, Windows 10 support was non existent. It's going to be super non existent. And the latest versions of Mac OS, and these manufacturers are getting rid of their audio interfaces. Uh, well, support for them on the new operating systems. One, because, hey, we want you to buy the new thing we made. And um, B, it's just too much of a hassle to keep legacy compatibility. And it turns out, at the same time, uh, TAC was doing a lot of work and adding uh, FireWire mm-hmm. audio interface support direct, directly into the Linux kernel, whereas of uh, 5.14, you kind of just plug it in and it works. And you can buy these things wicked, wicked cheap. Now, the biggest innovation in audio interface technology probably in the last 15 years has been like blinking lights. And... <laughs> 
people want to get stabby and angry at me. I'm like that, that's pretty <laughs> much it, man. Uh, every, we kind of figured out analog digital conversion around 2003. Like that's one of what's kind of locked down. But let's talk about the Scarlet Solo because this is the budget one. This is the one that everyone tells you, go out and buy this one. You know, it's like 120 US currency dollars and take your $100 interface and I want you to go buy a $300 mic designed to record kick drums and use it on your... Um, Twitch stream, we're mm. talking about the SM7B. Uh, but this has the advantage of having USB connectivity. You just plug it in and it kind of works. And that's why I've kind of shied away from USB audio devices because most modern USB interfaces, they're class compliant. You can thank Apple for that. Like strangely, you know, you, <laughs> you can hate Apple slightly less if you got something against uh, the old iDevices because uh, Apple said, you know, with the iPads and stuff like that, they have vendors like, hey, well, we want to install our drivers. And Apple said it were Apple. No. Um, <laughs> so they had to design it where it was completely class compliant with USB 2. So you just plug it in and it works. So guess what? We get to take advantage of that on Linux. And they're not terribly excited because you just plug them in and it's going to work. But the Scarlet line, you know, the red ones and, uh, well, clear nuts are red too, but those are the nice ones. Uh, but the Scarlet Line, Moto, M2, M4, the Behringer 2X, 4X series, all the Auden IDX series. These are all budget interfaces, and I'm not hating on them at all because um, the good news is like in 2021, a budget interface like that is going to get you a lot for very little. I mean, you're going to be able to do anything that you want to do with it. But even Pedro will attest, if you want an extra lot for a little... It's hard to pass up the firewire, man. Yeah, no, as someone currently speaking through and listening through uh, an Apugi duet, and uh, someone who's a big, big fan of the Apugi one, because mm -hmm. on Linux, USB, plug and play, really good uh, microphone preamp. Now, now, Go figure. Both of those <laughs> devices are super fun because both the Apogee duet firewire and the USB one, Mac mm -hmm. only. Out of the box yeah. on Linux. <laughs> they do not work and, or have they ever worked under Windows. Yeah. And my Digi Design too, with my USB interface. I Digi picked up design. for $25 I have an on eBay. Too. Yeah. It's great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. Oh, great amps. But um, yeah, just interfaces. keep that in mind when you're out purchasing stuff and buying stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I. This is a perfectly serviceable USB interface. What did I give it? Nine out of ten stars. And by that, I mean that's what it averaged out to be after I fed it all the information in our little review. Thing. So, <laughs> There's a seven. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no. It's the price. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to yeah. disagree with you there. <laughs> it's the price because I make a point that uh, for less money, you can get a audio interface with more features because Focusrite has a better marketing department than Behringer. And when you're at this price point, as I pointed out in the video, this is this is arguing Xbox PlayStation on the playground. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. the, the difference is what color is it and who has more like audio holes in it. And that, that's all it is. Yeah, there's that. But if you don't want to play around with budget stuff and you just want to burn through some money, mm, <laughs> You can get an RME device, like the one I'm using to record this show. Uh, but I'm with the budget route. I'm using one. Uh, I'm using a PCIe, not PCI. What I meant to say from 2000. Well, they started making them in 2003, but they've made a new version. Um, they're called the Hammerfall series, the HDSP. But the new ones are PCIe. And we've not had a good driver for them. We, uh, the initial ones would work with the old drivers, but they RME just released a new version this year called the AIO Pro. Didn't work on Linux at all, which was kind of sad because uh, I would like to upgrade the one in the box from PCI to PCI. <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to have a AM4 motherboard that had PCI slots. PCI slots. I'm going to constantly mix that up. But the good news is there's a new Linux driver and tools for the RME HDSP E sound cards and extension modules. This is great. I was very excited. Then I got really sad because it comes with a new version of HDSP config, which for the PCI version, I, does, oh, no screenshots. Come on, man. <laughs> nope. No screenshots. <laughs> I thought I saw a screenshot at some point. Boo. Boo. There was a screenshot. It's built with WX widgets, so. 
Yeah. I think you can formulate <laughs> you can what put it that might look like. Well, here's the problem. Like the original. Okay. First off, gotta, gotta have love for army. Um, Deutschland represent, um, this is continuing a 20 year tradition with army and Linux, um, driver developers, you know, even back with like the 9632 that I have that was first produced in 2003, which they kind of got it right. Cause you can buy one brand new in 2021. Army handed over, you know, the secret bits and like, okay, here, sign this and don't make that public, but this is how this works. So you can develop a Linux driver, which they did, which I'm using right now. It's built in the ELSA kernel, but the advanced control stuff was written with like the TC TK interface. And it's like mice type. It's very difficult to see. It doesn't scale. So every time I have to uh, make any changes, I got to clear the desk so I can get up to the screen <laughs> to, to, to see yeah. like dots. And um, this has got it's WX widgets and QT. So it's got a <laughs> brand new interface. I, I'm very excited uh, that this is out because we don't have much in the way of Thunderbolt, but like high end professional stuff. Hey, you can't go wrong with the army AIO or any of the, except for the Maddie, the Maddie thing's weird, but the Ray Dats and all the other fun stuff, the AES is, they're going to work. Now, this has just put me in a position where I need to come up with a good and proper scheme to get army to send me one for testing <laughs> because it's a thousand Are you sure you should be card, voicing right? that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> yeah. I I want I want one, but again, thousand dollars, nah. <laughs> Can't I, we have a big honking problem. The one I have right now currently works. So womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> so we saved the last bit because it's a yes. discussion topic. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. And no, this yeah. one has nothing to do with Microsoft, at least not directly no 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 this is about snaps or specifically why colin ian king uh left canonical snaps that that that's why <laughs> uh he was the person who was maintaining um part of his job was primarily to maintain snaps and it According to uh, his words, uh, uh, they were sucking their, uh, his will to live, and he had to mix the CDDL ZFS license with the kernel GPL license, which is a big no-no if you like to pay attention to licensing politics. Uh, and the uh, there's a, uh, a comment down below on that uh, thread that will be linked in the show notes where he elaborated further. And yeah, the refreshing snaps when dependencies had security fixes was a waste of time with normal Debian packaging. That basically you, well, I read through that and I'm going, oh, confirmation bias, confirmation bias, confirmation bias, confirm. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> everything that I've been shouting about snaps this whole time, even the people who are working with it are going like, I don't want to, I don't, I just don't want to. So canonical. It's over. Let it go. No, Canonical's going to do what it was like. Next, we'll get somebody in here who <laughs> will do it, man. You got to look at it like that. Now, this is the second person to publicly say that snaps were, if not the reason, one of the reasons that they left Canonical, which, you know, they join a fraternity of people who've worked at Canonical and went on to do other bigger and better things. But, um, you know, one thing... That's always confused me. Like I, I've definitely said on more than one occasion, you can make a case for containerization. I don't care if it's flat packs. I don't care if it snaps server side. Like mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't do it, but you could make that argument. Like, all right, you do you man. But as soon as you, you get on the desktop, I just doesn't, I, I don't see the appeal. And on a technical standpoint, you just, that argument doesn't, has never worked in my head. Then again, I'm getting old, but I, it was interesting to read from, um, his words that, you know, because you got to think about like a normal Debian package, you know, you, like when a support library gets fixed, what's, where's the work? No, it, it, it's just fixed. You don't worry about it. But with snaps, you know, you get, you got to refresh the snap every time something like that happens. But he writes like, so apart from the early random sketchy documentation, which of course that's been fixed, unintelligible snapcraft error messages. That's always fun. The loop mount bloat, the slower bad that's times, the security update mm -hmm. pain, the ad hoc workarounds with scriptlets and multipass breakage. It was okay. I guess, and that was somebody <laughs> working with snaps, making a case for them. 
That guy, I mean, but to be fair, I, I had the same like <laughs> core feeling about flat packs as well. I'm like, I, I'm not going to use either of them if I can help it. But again, get off yeah. my lawn, Jill. Yeah. Well, um, you know, he did, he did write that lots of snaps, when lots of snaps are installed, you get slow boot times. And the more snaps that are installed, the slower the, you know, OS boots. And, you know, that, that would be one of the reasons why it is recommended to use snaps for cloud or server when the workstation remains on and you're not turning on and off a computer. So that just makes sense. But yeah, I mean, yeah, snaps have have their place, and uh, and you know, I actually prefer app images, but I like flat packs too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it seems and in my opinion, snap flat technology packs has found its place <laughs> in Canonical yeah. and Ubuntu. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's it's very much canonicals, not developed here syndrome. We've seen we've seen it before. Unity, remember that? Mir, remember that? Uh, what was the other one? Uh, the init system, upstart, remember that? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are the three examples that I keep coming what are you back to about? because. Hang on, Pedro, I need to go check my Ubuntu OneDrive. I think I have it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's those three. It's Unity, Mir, and Upstart. Those three are like the biggest examples of that have hit the exact same notes that they've been doing with snaps. Oh, unity is uh completely half baked. It's not very, ready very for long. production. This is something we've been over. This is how, mm-hmm. all right. A big props to canonical for trying this stuff though, because mm-hmm. that takes money, Absolutely. time and resources. Were, trying is good. Not they everything were ahead. sticks, yeah. but canonical has what Pedro is going to go for a very long explanation for, but let's shorten <laughs> that down a little bit. Canonical does something, pushes it out, tries to force it, and abandons it. That is the that's the canonical yes. curve right there. And we're not at the point of snaps being abandoned, but we're at the very much shove it down people's throats we're, we're phase, at the which is trailing the end to force it, and then we know it comes yeah. next. And uh, yeah, when like when you guys like again, this is not the first person that's tapped out because of snaps. But hey, may, maybe it, maybe everything works out though. Everything's great. And yeah. I, I, I would love if that would happen. I this is one of those situations where I would actually love to be proved wrong. But I mean, tell me seen, you don't like the promise of containerized desktop things. That's why I oh, want to be proven wrong. That's wonderful. exactly why. <laughs> yeah. Especially if we're talking about video games, if you have like an old Linux game uh, and you try to run it on a distro nowadays probably not going to work very well out of the box. There's a lot of efforts from Lutris and from Steam to have run times, but if you have a container that has the game and everything it needs in the correct versions, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Valve, you so should try this that. idea. I got an idea. We'll call it Pressure Vessel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Except, wouldn't you know it? Pressure Vessel, based off flat packs, not snaps. Well, I'm not the first person so to say this. I think we know who I mean, won. Canonical's got some <laughs> smart people working. Canonical doing stuff, but IBM's got smarter ones. Uh, <laughs> now, f- uh, as far as containerized um, all-in-one packages went, mm-hmm. flat packs, in my opinion, won by a long margin. Not having the uh, mount loopback... Um, devices Mm. that slow down your actual operating system's boot process because it has to mount all of them every time you reboot. Uh, Yeah, that's bad. That's just what are you talking about? And then the snaps themselves taking 30 seconds to launch. Listen, you act act like typing in LS and going, this, that isn't fun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You see all of the mouse is like, what? Oh, each and every single one of those is a snap. That's the core. That's the snap uh, store repo handler thing. It's like, uh-huh. I don't know if things have gotten better because I remember in the early days we were playing around um, trying to get uh, OBS into a snap. And mm-hmm. it's like, so, uh, how do we get a plugin? And I started going through the documentation. I'm like, well, it would be like, new, 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 new. To this day, pro tip. I don't care if it's snap. I don't care if it's flat pack. Stay away from containerized OBS. It's a bad experience. Um, yeah. Hey, look at it this way. Uh, 
best of luck to everyone involved and um, mm-hmm. keep powering on. And we stayed away from the, uh, what was it, Pop OS Holy War that broke out yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> see i was very much sitting back and watching the two people involved uh going at it because one of them i have a great big deal of respect for the other one i didn't really know but uh yeah <laughs> that was fun to see <laughs> i don't know I, I i we're not gonna get into this show but i did have a moment of like you know i've actually grown out of that Hmm. I remember, but <laughs> that, that was, hang on, that was coming 100% from the perspective of like, I remember being that person or people, I should mm-hmm. say. Ooh, I remember those days. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, we got a slice pie, but before that, we want to thank each and every one of you who is supporting what we do. Uh, kick it us going each and every week. We try to kick some extra stuff back. We got an extra show that we do just for our patrons, our pre pre super shows, and that's available in video podcast form. If you like this, this is just the chewy middle of the show. We have live and uncut series. Speaking of that, live and uncut just went out for everyone on our new YouTube channel, mm-hmm. the Linux Teamcast Live and Uncut, and you'll be able to watch this one if you're a patron. After the fact, uh, later today in video and podcast form, but it'll go out for free a week from now, like everything else, because we don't want to put anything behind a paywall. But if you like some cheddar, because Daddy's got to buy thousand dollar keyboards, and I'm not really. <laughs> Thousand dollar keyboards, thousand dollar sound yeah, interfaces. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Got to make it ring. Uh, but you can do that uh, over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We want to thank each and every one of you um, who lets us do this because this is a really bizarre business model that I've put together of like, <laughs> hey, we're just going to give you everything free. And if you like it, uh, kick some coin. And we're not going to be reading ads every 10 minutes. And I think that's kind of a interesting way to do it. If you want some merch, we got that. We got the Patreons. We got the merch. Get a t-shirt. They're not overpriced. Look at that. 20 bucks. You can get Elks. 20 bucks. You can get some LWDW. You can get yeah. Frank for twenty one ninety nine. Maybe a sticker <laughs> to confuse and anger your friends. Hoodies. Tis the season. I got to order some new hoodie merch and all the other fun stuff. But stick around for your names in the credits and we think the world of you. And uh, LinuxTeamCast.com. There's a support button. Maybe there's something there you like. We need to get into a slice of pie. Ooh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sunday is Halloween, so Ben had to put a bite me pie in there. It looks like a peach, peach? cobbler. Yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> Ham. It's pre-baked. You can tell that it's still yeah. uh, the crust is still moist. <sighs> yes. <laughs> it, it doesn't have that that brown crisp uh, glow on it. So, what if I wanted like to ben. take a um, perfectly good <laughs> hard drive and um, <laughs> put it in a box, maybe put a fan on the back, plug it in. It'd be a pretty interesting thing. And Jill, do you think there's a way I could get around to doing that with a raspberry Pi? Oh, absolutely. So we have talked about the raspberry Pi um, network at- attached storage devices before, but this one actually lets you use a standard operating system that you're used to, like Ubuntu, Manjaro, or even Raspberry Pi OS. You just add a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, a few hard drives, and a Linux OS of your choosing. And you can actually pre-order the Pi Box, a modular Raspberry Pi storage server, from Kickstarter for $2.50. That includes the case, circuit boards, LCD, display, fan, and, and everything you need, and the Raspberry Pi for compute module I'm taking already a look at this. configured. I'm taking a look at this. Yes. It's time to ditch Dropbox, Google Photos, Netflix. So when your house yeah. burns down, you lose everything. Well, what's really awesome, uh, the, the cool thing about this, and one of the things you're, you're kind of paying for, is that th- their work on uh, the Pi Box um, having its own app store, which you, you can install template, templates for a Plex, Minecraft, Nginx, or Nextcloud server. Uh, that's brilliant. So you not only get the get the box, uh, but you get the um, software repository with it. Really cool. Yeah. And it is. You know, they, uh, <laughs> and uh, they also have a hacker bundle for a hundred dollars that comes with just the circuit boards, and you provide the hard drives and and the Raspi. So. Yeah. That's the big one right there. 
a hundred yeah. blocks through <laughs> the baseboard and the daughter board. That that's it. That that's not the worst. That's that's very nice. That's <laughs> we, uh, what was the uh, the Aragon one that had like the triangular shape. This oh, yeah. seems like a much better um, value wise, but it, it the only unfortunate bit is that it, it's only for the compute module. But if you were paying attention last week, the compute module is still available. <laughs> But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unlike the Argon, this was uh, clearly designed by somebody who read the cliff notes on thermodynamics. Unlike the Argon <laughs> case, which was like, oh, you just want to melt drives? I mean, uh, yes. I mean, Plastic that will everything. Do it. <laughs> this, this has got cooling going across it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy benefit with ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> and I like Go that figure. it has that that L C D the display with the stats on it. It's really nice. It's uh, as, very, as very long as you can cut it off. No, you can. You don't have to use it. Where does In fact, it say the, that? the hundred dollar kit. Well the hundred dollar kit doesn't come with it, so Yes. <laughs> well, the hundred dollar kit is just the baseboards to get everything up and running. You have to provide your own compute module and your own SSDs and your own case. So, again, not a bad price. Not a bad price at all. We, we've yeah. seen much worse. <laughs> Don't listen to a Margon case. I still love it. <laughs> oh, we love the Argon. No, I, I did I like the, the Argon triangular Argon. one, but yes, no, yeah. not no, for no, prolonged Argon, use. This, this thing's no. a thermal disaster on top of it, guys. I mean... <laughs> Oh, honest. and thank you to Artharian for finding this and several other stories we are covering today. <laughs> thank you so much, Artharian. <laughs> Vulcan on a pie. Why, why, why? Oh, yes. Woo-hoo. This was actually one of the things that we were discussing earlier in the week on Discord, uh, because one uh, Matthew Commandant brought up the fact that uh, a lot of ARM devices can't uh, play with Vulcan. Well, the Raspberry Pi does. <laughs> and uh, not only is it because we talked about a year ago uh, that it was now Vulcan 1.0 compliant. It just needed a little bit of software. Well, half of that is still true because it is now version 1.1 conformant as far as Vulcan is concerned. So the Raspberry Pi 4 is fully compliant with version 1.1 of Vulcan. Now it just needs more than uh, VK Quake or VK Quake 3. Um... Because that's <laughs> that's the only thing uh, that is currently available for the Raspberry Pi with Vulcan are, is the exact same stuff that was available at the time. It's other projects. Well, one that of the things that's showing off in this is like, hey man, you can get some Unreal Engine four shooter demos and you know the Sun all, all yes. of the time demos and stuff like that. But they really go out of their way to put them like <laughs> it, it runs, it launches. This is where yeah. we're at. Don't don't think you can be playing. Um, don't expect great gameplay. Soon, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, I, I think eventually we'll be able to play and roll four engine games on, on the Raspberry Pi, but that won't be for the future. But it is coming. <laughs> it is coming, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Strider, to your point there, it's not software rendering. <laughs> this is GLES. This is hardware accelerated Vulcan. Is yeah. proper Vulcan. And you got to think, yeah. you know, we will absolutely be able to play Unreal Engine 4 games on our Pi in 30, 35 years. I mean, um, <laughs> for the less Pi than 62. That. <laughs> I saw earlier on Reddit this week, somebody got a hold to uh, one of the Chinese, uh, like, eight core uh, ARM chips that they released. And I was talking about it, and Pedro was like, it's a very card playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Completely ignoring that it was doing x86 emulation playably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it, I wonder yes, if anyone. It does, but yeah, I wonder if they've tested this yet with the discrete uh, GPU add-on with the uh, Unreal Engine. Yes, that four it would games. be able to work even. I mean, it would be able to not to work even <laughs> faster. That would be. A... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the software support at this point. It is just. The software support. And yes, yeah. if you are uh, doing something that is graphically intensive or that um, actually pulls a lot of uh, resources from the Pi, use Vulcan. See, this is, like, this is like one of those side things. The other reason I want a $1,000 PCIe card because I want to see if I can build a Pi <laughs> jackbox. <laughs> 
because I think I can. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, if you want to tell us about any pi powered projects or Linux powered open source thoughts, hints, allegations, you want to send them our way, we'd love to hear about them. Best way to do that is head over to our web zone, linuxemcast.com, hit the contact button, select the show LWDW, and share your thoughts. You can also leave comments on YouTube or Patreon, and these posts are Yay. made there. We'd love to hear from you, but time is short and we gotta go but we enjoyed hanging out with you this wednesday so as a tradition before we get out of here let's roll some credits oh. <gasps> thanks again to our wonderful advisor our theron we love you <laughs> yes you our awesome. theron so is awesome. uh, the biggest contributor <laughs> of uh, random stories that we cover on the show absolutely yeah, absolutely undisputed <laughs> winner <laughs> <laughs> And thank you to Yaki Yam for the follow. That was awesome. Thank you very much, Yay. Yaki Yam. <laughs> <laughs> we love all our patrons. Here's the sh Chicago Kicks. You know what, patrons? Our sea monsters. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think but is acceptable. Oh, I saw that. Everyone. Ben, I saw everyone the heart mask. I saw the heart mask. No, what you meant to say, Jill, was after three weeks, you saw the heart mask. Yeah, I just noticed. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Love you. <laughs> I happened to look right at that time at the screen.